Hello, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to release week for these clockwork stars. My new book that just released this week, in fact it released yesterday, I'm so excited about it. It is a YA sweet fantasy romance and it's a quick read, it's a fun read, so give it a try if that sounds like something that you might like. Today I wanted to talk about the cover for this book. Um, this has been kind of a long time coming. I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. I like this cover a lot. Um, I worked very hard on it and I wanted to do kind of just a quick video telling you about my reasons for this, uh, why I did it myself, and also uh, some resources I use just in case you're curious and maybe thinking about doing a similar thing. So first we're going to have to do a little bit of a story time. So These Clockwork Stars was not the book that I first intended to publish. Um, as my debut. My debut was actually intended to be my other work in progress right now, which is called The Cook's Poison. Uh, I intended that to be my first book, so I was very excited about that book. I wanted to get the cover design because I already knew that I, I solidified what the title was going to be. I knew what the story was. I didn't have it quite, you know, written and polished yet, but I really wanted to do something for my book because I'd also been working on it for a long time and I just kind of like wanted something, you know, to commemorate all of my hard work. So I actually, uh, booked a cover design with Demanza, which is an amazing cover design company. They're really, really good. They're also one of the more expensive companies. So, and at this point, I wasn't thinking about designing my own cover at all. I knew I wanted to have my main character in the front cover, like I have here, and I want kind of all of my books to have that, but I also knew that the character on the front would have to have a couple of elements like added onto her to like make her fit the book. Um, I couldn't just go with like a normal like Shutterstock model, like I knew I would have to have some adjustments to the model uh, to make her kind of fit the story better. So at this point like I knew, I knew I did not have the skills for that. So so yeah, I booked the cover through Demanza. It was, it was a good experience. I really liked the cover designer I worked with, her name was Robin. Um, and the cover that I ended up with is absolutely gorgeous and I cannot wait to reveal it someday to you guys. Someday pretty soon hopefully. But uh, there were a couple of things throughout the process that I just didn't really like. I, I didn't like the fact that I couldn't control the cover. Like I could tell the designer what I was thinking and I could like give her some references or whatever. But like it wasn't like she would send me a draft and I would be unhappy with part of it. So I, you know, I would send her a reply and she would like, you know, I would have to wait a few days. She would revise it, send it back. And it was like this long, meticulous process. I really... I honestly didn't enjoy the process. I really love the designer and I really love the product. Like, don't get me wrong, it's amazing. But just the process was like not, I did not like it. It was very uncomfortable for me. Probably just because, yeah, like I couldn't control it. I couldn't, I felt like I couldn't articulate my vision well enough. And yeah, so it was like my fault. It was my fault entirely why I didn't enjoy the process. But I was working on that book. I, you know, decided to set it aside for a while, work on something else. And, you know, long story short, I ended up wanting to publish this book, obviously, <laughs> which is why we're in release week right now. So I knew I needed a cover for it, but I didn't want to go through Demanza again because I ended up paying a lot of money. And I haven't even gotten the full cover wrap yet, which is going to be like even more. I paid over $700 <laughs> for just like this, like just the front cover, like the ebook cover. So I knew I wasn't, I knew I at least wasn't going to go through Demanza again for for this new cover and also I just remembered the process and how I didn't really like it and so I've always been kind of interested in design in general I think it's fun I think it's something that I enjoy and so I really wanted to try my hand at designing my own cover I knew what kind of cover I was going for I already had my the cook's poison cover to kind of play off of to kind of hopefully make them match a little bit so I had some references I knew what fonts the designer used because I reached out and I asked her so I had all of this information and I'm like, you know what, I've always kind of been interested. I've always kind of wanted to dabble in Photoshop. Why don't I just do it? You know, people are going to stigmatize me. Maybe they're going to say, you know, you shouldn't design your own cover. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. But well, it's my book. I can do it if I want to. You know, I don't have to listen to them if I don't want to. So uh, because I have heard all this advice, you know, don't design your own cover. Don't design your own cover. And I think for some people that advice is probably really good because maybe they would just go and you know slap on slap sometimes new roman text on any old image they found online or something and for those type of people yeah you probably shouldn't be designing your own cover because you should be doing your research you should be knowing what genre you're writing for and what your readers expect uh you should know what kind of covers you enjoy as a reader of that genre because you should be a reader of your own genre and if you're not willing to do that stuff and you don't really care about that stuff maybe you shouldn't design your own cover but i'm not here to tell you what to do if you're an indie author you can make that decision for yourself so i started doing my research of like the covers i really liked and kind of thinking about 
the type of direction I wanted to go for this cover because there were a couple of different directions I could have gone. Uh, so let me show you really quick my like inspiration covers. So first of all, yeah, I had the cover for The Cook's Poison to go off of, but uh, this is a cover that I have. This book is called Princess Ben. It's by Katherine Gilbert Murdoch. And this cover has always captivated me. I love that it's got this uh, main character in the front. She's so beautiful. I love this text. It fits the book. It's like medieval looking. Yeah, so I knew, I knew that I loved this. And I like how they added some little sparkle effects down here. I love her gown. I just love this book. It makes me want to pick it up and read it as a reader of the YA fantasy romance genre, which is what this is. This is an amazing book. You should definitely read it. The romance is so sweet. Uh, it's uh, mwah, chef's kiss. It is everything. <laughs> Another inspiration for me was uh, this duology, actually. This Even the Darkest Stars duology. So it's Even the Darkest Stars and All the Wandering Light. I really love the stars. I love the colors. I love the text. Actually, this text is the same text I actually have. Um, it's called Desire, and there's a lot of different uh, like variations of each character. Uh, so it doesn't look like it, but it actually is the same text, which is funny. But yeah, I just love, and it has the main character on both of these two, but she's just kind of small and kind of hard to see. But uh, for me, for these, it was like the coloring, the, the stars, um, the beautiful sky. So, and of course, like a book like this, like an Enchantment of Ravens, like has the character there and just some pretty elements. So I did it. I, uh, I'll link the video below. <laughs> You're going to think this is funny, but when I'm learning something, um, I'm okay with a lot of ambiguity. I'm okay with like someone teaching me quick and then me just having to figure it out um, based on snippets of what I remember them saying. I know that like it's a frustrating way to learn and not everybody likes it, but I feel like it's okay for me to get a little bit of instruction, get a little inkling of what I should do and then be like, oh, okay, I can figure it out now. So I'm gonna link the video below that I used to uh, figure out how to do the title text because I had no idea, like I didn't know, I didn't know anything about the title text whatsoever. Like I didn't know how to do this cool uh, beveling. I didn't even know what it was called, this beveling right here that makes it look like shiny metal. I did not know what that was called. Um, I didn't know what color to use to make it look like metal. Uh, spoiler alert, it's just silver. <laughs> I just chose the color silver and it looks like silver if you bevel it. But yeah, th there are a couple of things that I learned from the video that I'll link. This guy is an indie author and he goes through like how he designs his title text for his book covers. And so I kind of like watched through and he explains it very quickly, very like uh, kind of a slipshod way of explaining, but it worked for me. I rewound some parts and watched it again and just kind of made sure I had the inkling of what I was going for. And then yeah, I bought Photoshop. It's a monthly subscription. And then I just started messing around. <laughs> Honestly, I went through a lot of different concepts for this cover. I didn't know what I wanted. Uh, this is why I like to do this because like I would be going back and forth with a designer and they would be like giving me their concepts. But like I would just have to keep going back and forth because I at the time I didn't know what I wanted. So I had to like do the slow and steady process to figure it out. I had to like try different backgrounds. I had to try different character models. I had to figure out exactly what I wanted. And it was it was a process that was personal and that I just wanted to do myself. So I did. <laughs> and uh, I'll show you some of the backgrounds that I was thinking about going with. At the time I designed this too, I didn't have the full story written because I wanted to do my cover reveal uh, at a certain time and you know, so on and so forth. But yeah, I was gonna go with a couple of these. I tried out a lot of different, uh, I didn't know what the title was. When I was designing this, uh, so I was like trying out how different titles looked on the front cover. I was trying, I was trying everything. I was figuring out which effects I needed to use for the model because I couldn't just take the model from the picture that I found her in and just like slap her right on the cover with nothing. Like I had to do a little bit of manipulation to make her look like she was more part of the scene. And yeah, this is what the file ends up looking like when you start taking away the layers because Photoshop. Uh, you work in layers. So I'm super happy with the result. I think that if you are interested in design and you're willing to learn and you're willing to be frustrated and you're okay with failing and messing up and trying again, I think you can definitely design your own cover. If you know what you like from your genre and you do your research, I don't think anything can stop you from doing whatever you want. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do whatever you want to do. And yeah, I love the control I had. I had complete control over this cover. I didn't have to go back and forth with anyone but myself. And I, I honestly, I love how it turned out. I think it's really pretty. <laughs> I will say the wrap, the full uh, front, back, and spine wrap gave me 
fits. <laughs> so you have to download the template from Amazon KDP or just wherever you're publishing your paperback because you have to input your page count. And uh, my page count kept changing because I kept printing off new proof copies to go through because I did a lot of proofreading with this book. I did a lot of editing. I did so much editing. And every single time I had like a good workable draft, I would print out a new proof. And so I had to keep changing the spine width in order to make everything fit. And I changed the back several times as well. This copy I have right now is not the final back. Uh, the final back has actually some parchment on it. It looks really cute. So yeah, I did the full wrap several times and every single time I did it, I forgot to save the <laughs> Photoshop layered file. I exported it to, I think it was a PDF so that I could upload it to the vendor site. But I kept forgetting to save the layered Photoshop file. And so like, <laughs> I had to redo it every single time. I think I did it three different times. It was so frustrating. I feel like I'm kind of an expert now though, <laughs> a little bit. Like I had some forced practice. I'm not an expert. That was a joke. I'm definitely not an expert. But I, I definitely kind of know my way around a, a paperback wrap now, which is fun, which is good. It's a good skill. And I think as an indie author, it's good to have several different skills. Yeah, I just, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like the cover. If you don't, don't tell me. <laughs> I know that most of you do. You guys are so sweet. I've I've received so many good positive comments about this cover. I thank you so much for that. I love having the support of all my writing friends on here. And I hope my videos bring you some type of inspiration if you are an indie author or want to become an indie author. I hope that watching my videos gives you some kind of spark, you know, that like, hey, maybe I can do this, maybe I can try that. Uh, that's kind of what I'm hoping to bring with my videos here uh, whenever I talk about self-publishing. So thank you so much for watching and once again my book is available now so crazy is available in paperback on amazon and ebook on many other digital retailers thank you so much if you've bought it if you've supported me it means more to me than you could ever know if you've even considered leaving a review thank you thank you so much for indie authors reviews are like everything so but if you don't want to review it don't feel pressured <laughs> and yeah i'm really happy thank you so much and i will see you again Trust me, very soon with a new video. Bye, guys.